Good evening, Crossroads family and guests. My name is Holden Williams, and I have the opportunity and pleasure to be here and talk with you a little bit about the scriptures. And actually, I'm in the new adult Sunday school room here at Crossroads. We, we refer to that as the Francis room. But, man, it's such a pleasure to be here. We've got this thing all, do all dolled up, and it really does look good. Um, one of the things I want to talk with you all about tonight is I want to share the scripture with you, and we're going to go into the book of Acts, the great book of Acts. You know, many times you'll hear me, if I have the opportunity to speak, you'll hear me say, man, I really love this record, and, and I do. And at the moment I'm saying that, it is my favorite record. But what I found out is I just love the whole entire book. Some things at some points in my life, and I'm sure in yours as well, they affect you different ways, and you see it bigger than you've ever seen it. And sometimes you have those aha moments, and it's like the Lord opens up the scripture for you, and you're just there, and you're dazzled by it. So I'd like to talk with you a little bit about the book of Acts. We're going to be in Acts chapter 17. <clears throat> so I, I want to talk a little bit about the book of Acts first. Uh, and it we're also doing... Pastor's doing such a fabulous job. He's opening up the, the beginning of the book of Acts. We went through Pentecost. We learned some fabulous things, how that probably they were not in the, in the upper room when the Holy Spirit was given out. Rather, they were in the temple. Makes sense when you read the records. So, so those little nuggets are unfolding for us. And it's just a great, exciting time here at Crossroads because we're examining the Holy Spirit what is it? How does it operate? And is it for me? And the obvious answer by the time he gets done with the series will be, absolutely it's for me because the scripture says it's not only to, the, the apostle says, it's to you and your children, those that are all or far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, have you been called? If you're born again, you've been sent that kletos, that invitation to come and step into the kingdom of God. So, yes, you've been called. Is the Holy Spirit for us? Yes, it is. And it's just great. It is so great and refreshing to see that and to hear that again. Um, the book of Acts is a transitional book. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, if you look into the Gospels, what we see is over and over and over again, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Once the Lord, his life and his ministry was over, and he's crucified, he's died, and then he gets raised again, you go to Acts chapter 1, and the first thing out of those disciples' mouth was, are you going to restore the kingdom now? Because they understood from way back what the scripture said, and the scripture said that there would be a coming Messiah, he would die, he would raise again, and there would be an establishment of an earthly kingdom, what we know as the millennial reign. What they did not know, and what nobody ever knew in the Old Testament, was this time that you and I live in now. It's called, some call it the age of grace, some call it the time of the Gentiles, and it's where the kingdom was offered to the Jewish people, but what did they do? They killed their king. They rejected it. The kingdom was offered more than one time. Uh, you will see uh, the great, the great, um, I'm looking for a word, I can't grasp it. When Peter gave his great oration, he said, repent, be baptized, so that the times of refreshing could be, could come in. Well, now, when you and I read that as Americans, a lot of times we think, oh, he means a great refreshing time. No, that's not what that meant. That meant that if Israel would accept Jesus as their king and recognize him as their savior, then that could usher in that time of restoration where the kingdom could be set up. But what did they do? They rejected him again. Now, the day of Pentecost comes. All the, the, they spoke in tongues. Everything changed. God pours out his Holy Spirit on mankind. It's never happened before. 
this great event. Now we, we see men that were hiding behind closed doors. Now they're bold because they know something has happened. And it's like what happened with the Apostle Paul. They had an experience with Jesus. They had an experience of the Holy Spirit in their life. And they knew it was real. And it changed their life. And they, it changed them forever. So with this transition, now we go from the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of the grace of God, of faith, or salvation, by grace through faith. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So this great transitional book, it's just phenomenal, and, and I encourage you to study that book um, more and more as, as you have the opportunity to do so. Um, one of the things that's important in when you read Scripture, no matter what book it is, or what section of Scripture it is, and Pastor did a great job of this last Sunday, he put up on the slide the timeline of Acts. There are times that you will read Two verses and it may be years between those two verses but unless you recognize that it's just another book it's just another scripture pay attention when you're reading scripture to time words when then at this time and pay attention to the words because the words have meaning from Acts chapter 1 through uh, or until Acts chapter 10 when the Holy Spirit was given out on Cornelius' household. It was approximately 10 years, 7 to 10 years. We don't know exact. But that that's a long time. A lot of things happened in that time frame. Um, we see chapter 9 of Acts. The Apostle Paul, who was breathing out bad things uh, on the church and he was taking people to prison because they were Christians because in his heart of hearts he believed they were crazy and they were very dangerous what happens to Paul that changes him he has an encounter with Jesus and if you remember what he says on that road he says who is it Lord Lord is that you he's not talking about Lord Jesus He's asking, Lord God, is that you? Because he didn't believe in Jesus. And when the Lord Jesus answered him, he said, what? I am the Lord God? No, he said, I am Jesus whom you persecuted. And I'm sure in the Aramaic, if you read it, what Paul says next was, rock roll. That's a joke. He really didn't say that. If he did, it's not written down. I don't know. But he... He knew, my goodness, this is Jesus who I persecuted. Maybe I need to relook at this. And what we see is the Apostle Paul's life was changed forever. I taught last time in Romans chapter 1 where it says that the Apostle Paul, a called apostle, he became a called apostle. Why? Because of his choice. Because of his encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It changed his life. He actually became a doulos, if you remember that. That is one that is sold out because of voluntary action. He chose to, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, just like you and I do. We have that, that opportunity to not follow him, but because we love him, what do we do? We do our best to follow him. Do we make mistakes? You probably don't, but I've made plenty. So, in this transitional book of Acts, one of the things we're going to look at tonight is in Acts chapter 17. And y'all, you, you know, the world is a messed up place. All you got to do is turn the news on, and, and we see some pretty, pretty severe, ugly things right now. Um, what, what I try to do is try to just stay sane and... and, and just remember, oh yeah, I, I, re I read Timothy. It says that it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Well, folks, I'm 62, soon to be 63. It's gotten worse. So it's important that we be rooted and grounded as the Apostle Paul would say in Ephesians. 
so that we're what able to stand against those fiery darts of the wicked and we got we got to remember that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood it may look like it it's a racial thing it's not it's a spiritual battle and what's the purpose behind it it is to divide and conquer we do not take the apostle paul would write in corinthians we're not ignorant of satan's devices my message to you one of them would be don't be ignorant of satan's devices do not fall for those crazy tricks that are pushed out there on us and you know there's times we don't have any, any choices it's going to be pushed on us and we got to put that spiritual shield up and ding ding we hear those things bouncing off because here's the real deal you're either alive in christ jesus or you're dead in trespasses and sins and there is no middle ground now many people are all upset and they don't know which direction to turn that's where you come in because what you have to offer them is an experience with jesus christ and when they do experience it it will change their life just like it changed yours um don't know if you if you're aware of this or not but the apostle paul you may have heard about his missionary journeys um, some say it was three, some say it was, the, it was four, depends on how you count them. Um, the fourth one, if, if you want to say it was the fourth one, was when he was in, in prison. Uh, it, it stayed two years in Caesarea because they imprisoned him, and then they sent him to Rome. Well, okay, that counts as his fourth one, at least to me. Um, and the reason I bring that up is you're going to hear, if you, if you talk about things like that to people, they're going to say, well, no, there's only three missionary trips. Just be aware, some say it's three, some say it's four. It's okay. <laughs> We're not there to fight. Just just recognize it and go with it. it it's okay. Is it three or is it four? Depends on how you look at it. Um, does it keep you from being saved? Absolutely not. Uh, so, uh, you know, what you want to do is open up a dialogue with people so that you can share the scripture and you don't want to fight them. You know, I, I've been in, 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 in and around churches that it's either their way or the highway. You have to believe the way I believe or just go somewhere else. Well, where's the love in that? There's not. It's all It's all about ego. I'm not about ego. I had a pretty big one at one time. But you know what? Since I've relaxed and found out that the Lord Jesus Christ died for me and I am the creation and he is the creator, when I keep that in mind, things go much, much smoother. And my job is to follow and to obey. It makes things a lot easier. It takes the pressure off. So the, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, and hopefully some of these little nuggets that I'm throwing out will help you. But in Acts chapter, uh, we're not going to 17 yet. The first missionary journey, which by the way, if you go from Acts chapter 1 to the end of Acts is roughly 40 years, give or take a little. So a lot of things happened in that time. The Apostle Paul would begin his first missionary journey. And here's another little nugget of information for you. Most Christians believe that the, the day of Pentecost was the beginning of the church. There are thoughts out there that says, no, that really wasn't the beginning of the, of the Christian church in the age of grace. It was in Acts chapter 13 where Paul the, offers the kingdom to, to the Jews again, and they say, no, we don't want it. And the Apostle Paul says, that's okay. Because you've rejected, we will turn to the Gentiles. They will hear it. And sir and ma'am, they certainly did hear it. Some say, well, see there, this is the beginning of the new church. Okay, that's fine. I personally don't believe that. But is it a point to argue? It's not to me. Just know that that point of view is out there. It's okay. Paul began his first missionary journey in Acts chapter 13, um, and it lasted approximately three years. That first missionary journey that he went on was about, is a little over 1,500 miles. Now, you probably can't see this, but this is a diagram of his missionary journeys, and it starts and goes and goes and goes and makes the circle and goes and goes it was quite a long time a quite a few miles when you take into consideration that if you walked home to the or if you went home tonight and you said baby 
Get your stuff packed up. We're going to Florida. She said, really? You gashed the car up? I said, no, we're walking. Well, donkey, camel, feet, or ship was the major four modes of transportation at that time. So when you say, well, 1,500 miles, you know, that's maybe from here to Texas, um, eastern part of Texas. It's not that far. Well, try walking it. You know, you might need some new Nikes. So, um, and that took a little over two to three years. So, and, and he was planting churches. I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a great thing. And he was getting run out of town. And it was, it was, a, it was a pretty cool thing, I guess, as we look back on it. But then, and that was, I think that was around 47 A.D. when he first began. Uh, his second missionary journey was about 3,300 miles. And it was, again, about, about three or four years. Um, his third journey was a little over 3,000 miles. And, again, it was about three years. So as we see the Apostle Paul making his rounds, it was for a, a feat of that day was pretty impressive. And by the way, excuse me, during his second missionary journey, he goes to a place called Thessalonica. We're going to read about it. And in about 53 AD, he, he, get, he goes on out of Thessalonica. But anyway, in about 53 AD, he begins to write his letters. Thessalon he writes 1 Thessalonians. For those of you that don't know, when you read in your Bible, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, they're not in, that's not the order that those letters were written. The first letter that was written in the New Testament was, at the, was Thessalonians, and it was on Paul's second missionary trip. So, again, that's something to be mindful of. Um, is it important? It's important to me. I say and I profess that I am a follower of Christ. Well, to me, then I ought to know a little bit about him. And I ought to know a little bit about his word. And I ought to know a little about the characters that, that have helped bring the gospel to where it is. So it's important to me. We see later on that the Apostle Paul, um, I think on his, maybe on his third, third journey, he, he's in Corinth. And he writes the great book of Romans. The great book of Romans. It's been called the Magna Carta of the Bible. It is the foundational letter for the Christian today. So, and he writes the prison epistles. Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon. It's important, it's important to me because I just like to know. I like to have a handle on the one that I profess to be my king and to know about him. So I can at least carry on a good conversation. And you'll see why that sort of becomes important, or at least why it becomes important to me. So now, give me a little bit of a preview and, and hopefully some little nuggets out there. And I'm really trying to watch my time, by the way. I brought a clock, so I really want to get through this. I, I really want to try and get in my 30 minutes. Acts chapter 17. It's not going to happen, by the way, but I'm going to try. Um, it, it says this, now... Now, it's a time word. Now when? They had passed through Amph Amphipolis and Apollonia. They came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. The Apostle Paul was a Pharisee. He was very familiar with how the synagogues worked. Everything about it. And it says, and Paul, verse 2, as his manner was. What was the Apostle Paul's manner? Well, we won't go there because we don't have time. But if you see 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, you know, since we're not going to go there, I'll read it. It says, Brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. I'm the right Reverend Paul. Yeah, I'm glad y'all had me, had me over here today. That's not how he did it. He said, For I determined not to know anything among you except this. Jesus Christ, him crucified and raised from the dead. That's what the Apostle Paul's message was. Follow his lifeline throughout history. His message was always very simple. Jesus Christ, him crucified and him raised from the dead. And he said, uh, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, 
but in demonstration of the, of the Spirit and of power. You see, when the Apostle Paul spoke, it did something because those words were anointed from God and they reached in and they got a hold of people's hearts. And when they did, it changed their lives. See, you can go out here and you can do demonstrations. You can do all kinds of things. But until something reaches your heart, you're not going to be any different. Uh, back to chapter 17, since we did not go to Corinthians. And Paul, as his manner was, that was his manner. He went in unto them. See, he went in. He engaged. He went in unto them three Sabbath days and reasoned with them. So for three straight weeks, the Apostle Paul goes in and he reasoned with them. I love that word, reason. You know what word that is? That's the word dialectomy. That's one of them big fancy words. And here's what it means. It's where we get, think of what word we might get our English word from. Dialogue. As he goes in, it says he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. And that out of the scriptures means he went in. He established a dialogue with them. And they started on the same point because that point was the scriptures. And it's starting with that, it says he reasoned with them. Verse 3. Opening and alleging. Opening and alleging. That word opening, it means he exposed to them to their ears and to their eyes. Beginning with the scriptures who Jesus Christ was. You do not reach people by my brother Ben Chambers said this better than I ever did. And he's smart. He thought of it. He said, you know what? Trying to scare the hell out of people does not work. It lasts for a little while. But what happens? It hasn't hurt, touched their heart. If you're going to change an individual, you've got to change their heart. Back when I used to drink, I'd get sick. If anybody that's ever been drinking knows what you do. You get sick and you start hollering for Ralph. You know who Ralph is? When you're all bent over, he's outside around the clothes, you holler, Ralph! Ralph! <laughs> okay? So you understand exactly what I'm talking about. And then, of course, you got to tell everybody what Ralph drives. Ralph drives a big... <laughs> so, what... And every time I do that, I'd say, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I'm not going to do that anymore. And I don't. Till next weekend. What happened? I had a little bit of fear and a little bit of anxiety about what the way it made me feel. But you know what? I got over it pretty quick. Because it didn't do anything for my heart. But now, I met somebody. And I don't do that stuff. What are you saying? I'm saying when you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, those things that you thought were really cool, they don't shine like they used to. But when you pick up a nugget of that scripture and you put it in your heart and it changes your life, there is no comparison whatsoever. Here's what he did in verse 3. He opened an ledge. He exposed to them the scriptures. Of salvation through grace by faith. Here's what he said to him: that Christ must one must have suffered, two raised again from the dead, and three that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. What's the result? See, that's that's the answer. That's the answer. If you want your life changed. That's the answer. If you want to change other people's lives, that's the answer. You've got to change their heart. And you know what? You can't do that. But what can you do? You can introduce the Holy Spirit to somebody. You can help them have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ just like you did. And don't worry about you changing their heart. That's not your job. 
Your job is to present. Your job is to open and allege. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. Man, when you realize that, gosh, I went years before I ever knew that. And I felt so bad because I was so terrible at witnessing. I still am. Except now I can reach in my pocket and give somebody a business card that says, hey, you know what, you go to church anywhere? No, not really. Well, up here. Here's my name on this business card. Out here, it's got the directions. Want you, man, I'd love to see you there. Great. Okay. Hey, my name's on there. Tell Jody Bray, once she gets done hugging all over you, that to find me and, and you can sit with me. I can do that. Well, the pressure's on. Then it's up to God to convict. I've done my part. And man, it just feels so good. So, what happened? What was the result of that? Hey, I'm, reaching, I'm getting close on my time. Uh, verse 4. What happened? What was the outcome? Well, some believed. Wow. Introduced. Some believed. And consorted. Yeah, we're consorted. Yeah, getting consorted with some people. A lot of folks don't know what that word means. But today I didn't either tell what you don't say. <laughs> so, here's what it means. In Tennessee English, they hung around. They believed what they said, and they, they knew something was different because words have power when they're spiritual words, mm -hmm. and they have the ability to change your life. So when they hung around, that's why to me men's ministry is such a big deal to me because these young guys, they haven't seen what I've seen. They've not been through what I've been through. Not that I've been through everything and have all the answers, but when I look down that table, I see a lot of gray-haired old men. No offense, guys. And I'm sure none was taken. And you know what our desire is? Our desire is for you not to go through what we went through. We, we can give you a shortcut if you'll let us. Open and allege. That's what we want to do. As we walk down the street and you meet somebody, hey, how you doing? I'm very good. All right, that's, that's not what they say. Well, they all say fine. How are you fine? How are you fine? You know, that's how that goes. Well, in reality, a lot of times they ain't fine. Got a business card. We got all kinds of them out here. To the crossroads of Assembly of God. So, how you doing? I'm okay. Good. Hey, man, you going to church work? Yeah. No? Well, here. I'm going up here at Crossroads. Man, it's a great place. No condemnation. Come in tattoo if you want to. In fact, I think I'll get my earring beer tomorrow. But anyway, that's a joke. I, I probably won't. But if you see one, hey, you know, so I, you saw it here first. But anyway, um, you can do that. You can give them a business card. That's what we got them for. It's just, it's just a tool. Why? When they get here, you know what happens? Open and allege. Open and allege. And you know what happens? I've heard comments that say it. And I've seen tears go down the cheeks that says, I've never seen anything like this. The people actually like me. They love me. Jody Bray has hugged me. Where my back's <laughs> I love Jody, I love you if you're there. You're so impressive to me, and you do such a great job. Gosh, I wish I could be like you. But it, it's, it's just incredible. We've got something, folks. We have got something in this church. And you know what it is? It's called the Spirit of God to alive. We just want to keep it that way. Open and alleged. Open and alleged. Some believed. There's two types of believers in the Bible. Apathia, apostia. Apathia. We see in the next verse. But the Jews believed not. And they moved. They caused a lot of trouble sometimes. And those guys did. So, two things are going to happen. Well, three things are going to happen. Either A, they're going to believe. B, they're not going to believe. Apathia, they don't believe. They've heard it. They've heard all the evidence. They've seen it. No, I'm not going to believe. Apostia, they believe. You have a third bunch. That's those that they've heard it. But they're not quite there yet. And there's a record in Acts where it says, those folks said, you know what, we'll hear you again on this matter. Hey, they didn't say no. So they either believe, 
and didn't believe was his faith. Let me hear you again. You know what? If we can get them in that door and they can experience what the Holy Spirit is doing here, they're going to either believe or going to not believe. And then they say, you know what? I've heard this comment. I'm going to come back because I liked what I saw. Maybe they were believers. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. I'm not the searcher of the soul. All I know is I got to tend my own garden, like my comment would say. I got to take care of what God has entrusted to me. Well, that means I got to do the example. I've got to love on them. I've got to, I've got to love them. You know, there's nowhere in Scripture says you got to like them. You got to love them, which is probably good. But that's probably all. You know, I'm still working on Kip. He says he he's trying to like me, but who knows? You know, hey, I'm working on him. Love you, Kip. But my time is up. So, recap real quick. Paul had a manner. So do you. He went in. That means that he engaged. And he reasoned. He established a dialogue. You're not going to establish a dialogue when you start telling somebody what to do, how to do, that they're not good enough, that they should do it this way. They should only read a certain type of Bible. They should dress this way. And if they don't, they just don't measure up. Wrong. And. Eh. Show it to me in Scripture, chapter and verse, please. He reasoned, he established a dialogue, opening in a legend, opening in a legend. He, op he exposed to them the Scripture as it really was, and some of them had an aha moment. I didn't pray before we started. I apologize for that. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it up right now. So, if you got questions, shoot them on in. If you got comments and they're good ones, shoot them on in. If not, send them to... The bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love them too. But uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for such a great and wonderful day. What an opportunity and a privilege it is to stand before you and your people to share your word, to just be exposed to who you are, God, and just the greatness and just the love that you have given us, God, and, and it's just shown us. Lord, thank you for the opportunity for each and every one of us to be able to go out and just to share Jesus with somebody because, Lord, have mercy. You know, you know you've empowered us to go out and share the gospel. And it doesn't take much. It's just asking them, do you know Jesus? And it can be as simple as giving them a business card. It can be as simple as saying, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. It's as simple as I love you. It can even be a simple as a smile and a hug. But God, I'm just so thankful to be part of this ministry and just to live in this day and time of the hour, even though if you look on the outside, you say this is a crazy place. And it is. And had we went on and, in Christ's name, amen, if we had went on and read in Acts, I encourage you to do that. But what you would see is the allegation was these men are, have come here and they are turning the world upside down. Well, folks, the world's already upside down. So if you introduce the scripture and you introduce Jesus to them, all you're doing is turning it right side up. I love you. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. It's been a great day.